Welcome into a new Getting to Know video. Today I'm joined by Dylan Dixon, a 24-7 sports four-star prospect from Pearland, Texas. Dylan, uh, thanks for joining us on here. Uh, it's an honor. I, I know you've been working hard this offseason. Uh, you've been working with a personal trainer, and, and you've played in a lot of seven-on-seven -seven tournaments. I, I noticed you were named an MVP of a tournament last weekend. Which event was that? Um. It was a pilot tournament out here in Houston, so like it was a hometown tournament, and um, it was an 18U Wood Seniors, so it's a division with and without seniors. So we would play with seniors. I mean, I felt like playing with seniors is a little bit better, anyways, because playing with guys that are already going to college and like it's, it's always better to play up. So um, I won the MVP of that division, and I mean, there's no other like the standards are set. Like you're in your hometown, you gotta come up, you gotta show up and show out, like you know guys from all over this, the um, country coming to your hometown, so you can't let them take your field in your hometown. You've been able to travel out to some other tournaments too, right? Yes, sir. Well, where all have you uh, guys participated in tournaments in? So, so far this year, we've we've been – we played two Houston tournaments and a San Antonio tournament. But in the past seasons, we played in – we played in Dallas. Oh, I've played in the Dallas tournament too. Um, the one in at and Stadium, we played in that one. We won that tournament too this year. Um, I, we, I played in Dallas, San Antonio, um, Tampa, Vegas. So a few, played in a few nice places. If somebody came to watch you play for the first time, what, what do you think would stand out to them about you as a player? Uh, probably my size, like how I can move as a DB at, and with the weight I've put on. Like, usually, like, I wouldn't, like, like to toot my own horn, but usually, like, guys, like – they move well at a at a high weight once they get to college, but I feel like I'm already moving well in my weight right now in high school. And, like, so, like, I, re I play middle linebacker, but we play a lot of man. So, like, I'm guarding, like, those little short running back, those third three-man receivers. So, like, I'm guarding, like, the little fast dudes. Like, I'm okay. I'm already I'm, I'm already six one and a half, six two. so I'm, like, three or four inches taller than them with, like, 20 more pounds on them, and I'm still guarding them, and I'm running with them foot for, for foot for foot. So you played outside linebacker as a sophomore, but you were pretty much strictly a safety last year, last season, right? Yes, sir. Um, so about that, if this year I'm probably going to move back to outside linebacker. My team is just – it was what it, the, what we needed, and it was the most um, key position on our team that needed, like, a person. And, like, at that position, we were at a 3 through 5 and I played in the middle rover. So, like, it couldn't just be anyone there. So, like, they needed a big, big-time player at that position. So, I had to sacrifice that. But we had a safety that proved himself this year that should be able to play the rover position coming up this this up next upcoming season. What was it like this past season with your Pureland teammates playing in a season amid a pandemic? It's great you guys were able to get some games in. But was it uh, did it feel any differently than, than your previous seasons? Well, our fans try to try their best to make the, uh, our odds favor. Like we travel well. Like um, we played, we are like two, 20, 20 minutes from Galveston, and we played our second round of playoffs in C King. So like that's Upper Houston, like on top of our Beltway. So it was like a uh, sixty minute drive, an hour drive. Like so, and we had more people than C King. I mean, than um, at Tuscaloosa and the Tuscaloosa was 10 minutes away from C.E. King. So, like, I feel like our fans, like, they they try the best, but, like, it's nothing like last year. As a sophomore coming out, I feel like I, like I was playing power five ball already because especially against Dawson, our rival team, like, who, like, our stadium is an on-campus stadium. It seats about 12,000. And when I tell you it was more than 12,000, we had people sitting in the baseball stands and our, and our softball stands, people – in the back of their trucks, watching over the fence, um, the pe the neighborhood behind the rig, people sitting on the roofs. Like I just felt like it was amazing, and like it's something that many people won't get to experience in high school. So I felt like this year was kind of a bum, but at the same time, I was blessed to get to play. While I know everyone and got this blessing, some people are actually even playing right now. Going to recruiting, uh, obviously you were highly sought after by a lot of colleges. How close or different was the recruiting process than what you had kind of expected going into it? Well, 
Um, as what I expected is like, so I grew up around like some top dogs. Like I had BC watching on um, Brandon Campbell to, to look after, like look up to when I was a sophomore. Um, JD Head, he's a quarterback at La Tech. I was just working out this corner that was a corner at our um, school. Um, the name Taz Marshall, he goes a lot tech right now. So like I've seen all these edits and stuff that they're getting uh, all the college love, they're FaceTiming them while we're working out and like and pre COVID, like guys are coming in to watch them work out. So I'm I'm feeling like, oh yeah, it's my turn. Like I gotta work out, work out, show them what I'm about while they're watching while they're watching them, I come take the spotlight. But I mean this year, like, it really wasn't like that because of COVID and like people not being able to travel. So I feel like that's the biggest thing, but everything else is like a expected. Like my dad told me, like once I'm like, this is what I asked for. Like I want this, so I'm gonna have to be able to do it and be able to keep up with it. Like manage my time with like with training and Zoom calls and talking to coaches. So like the, everything else is expected besides like the COVID stuff. When Colorado gets involved in your recruitment, what was your initial impression of the Buffs? Well. At first, I, they really wanted me because they offered me in mid to football season, like September, October. So not many schools do that. So I felt like, like oh, yeah, like it's important. Like they, they want me off the shelf. Like they need me, top dog. So and Brett Maxey made, made me feel like I was really like one of them. Like I was worth it. Like because like really like I besides being ranked, like every time in my life, like I felt like people told me I wasn't good enough. So having a college coach like Maxi come show me, tell me that I'm good enough and tell me how much they want me in their program. And he sent me like motivational quotes to like that, like with things related in my life. And I felt like, like that was just the best fit. Was that different than other coaches? What, what is kind of Brett Maxi's recruiting style? You mentioned uh, the, the messages that, that inspired you. Was there anything else that kind of stood out about the way he tried to catch your attention? <laughs> Well, he went to TSU, Texas Southern, which is right here, um, like 15 minutes away from home. Um, he grew up in Dallas. He's Texas native. Um, and TSU is an HBCU. And my mom actually went to HBCU Preview. And, like, you you could tell, like, our parents connected. Like, they had things similar in common, the bonds. And I already connected with him as a player by him sending me motivational quotes and helping me with things that are related in my life. So I felt that it was overall the best decision for me. Like I had mentioned, a lot of other colleges after you, you had double-digit offers. What was the process like of, okay, I'm going to sit down, I'm going to narrow it down. Did you sit down, talk to your family, your coaches, or were you kind of doing that on your own? Well, my dad and my brother play a big part in my recruiting as they sometimes help me manage my Twitter. Because, like, in my school – the service is really bad. And like, usually those messages I get during those times. So they usually help me manage. And like, we keep tally of like coaches who show the most interest, most love, who it takes me. And it's just Colorado always seemed to pull through. Like they would open my text. They text me, ask me how I'm doing. Like plenty of coaches would do that, but they wouldn't do it more often or relative enough as Colorado. Do you remember the time when it kind of clicked for you and, and you realized you wanted to commit to Colorado? Well, I seen a Texas game. It flipped the switch for me because, like, many people think, oh, yeah, they lost to Texas. Now I'm in here Texas. I want to go to Texas. But if you watch the game, you can see, like, and you watch their season, you'll see, like, like the reasons why they lost to Texas. Like, like little things like an injured linebacker, the poor quarterback play, all things that could be changed over the off season. And Carl Durrell came in, had a, a nice good season. Um he had a win percentage over fifty percent. And he, he was only he only coached that team in the off season for like three months. So coming in and doing that in a major in a major power five conference with like great names like USC and and um Oregon, like names that kids look after and like Coming in and doing that as I already looked at as an underdog, just like kind of like set it in for me. Nice. Uh, and you were Colorado's first commitment for 2022. Did you take some pride in that? Well, honestly, I really didn't even know that until um, until it came about. Because like 
I feel like I'm not the type of kid to look at oh, who they got or who they offering or who's their commits because I don't care if they have a five star. They had six five star safety and all OBs that played the same position as me. If I feel like Colorado was the best fit for me, then I'm going to show up and I'm going to compete no matter what. So I didn't really like understand how big that was until like it actually went through. Since you hopped on board, Carlton Madden from Georgia has uh, been added to the commitment list. Have you had a chance to reach out or, or talk to him at all yet? Uh, no, sir. Okay. What uh, is Colorado just recruiting you strictly as a safety? Is there a chance you could play a different position or is it pretty much uh, for sure you're going to play safety? Uh, as all as of football talks right now, we've talked about strong safety position, and that's something that I'm trying to get into, like get deeper as we get into our zooms and a dare period comes soon. And like I'm gonna try to under, better understand their film and get like better understand my the OLB position and the strong safety position just in case they want to switch me to OLB. But right now, from my understanding, it's gonna be a strong safety, which I'm more comfortable with because. OB is good. Like, I can play that just as good. But also, like, I feel like I can move as a corner or come tackle as a linebacker. So, I feel like that would be a good fit for me. Where were you born, and when did you start playing football? Uh, I was born here in – well, I was actually born in Clear Lake. So, like, like Clear Creek, IZ, and all that. I grew up in, in that region, like, down by the water. And then um, I started playing football when I was six years old. Um, I played for the Ellington Rams. I was uh, I started Pee Wee. My dad started coaching me when I was like eight, seven, eight. He wanted me to get instruction from someone else before I get to him, and then he stopped coaching me twelve when I was twelve. Let me do middle school on my own, and now he's our seven on seven coach. And my brother and my dad um co own our seven on seven organization, South Texas Elite, and so. Pretty much since then, since so, and when I was like six years old, I started playing. Nice. What's been your your best memory as a football player so far? Uh, I would say getting out the first round of the playoffs, because our team hasn't got out the first round of playoffs since 2015. It was to a point where I would come into class my sophomore year. I got moved up for the playoffs my freshman year, so. Those two first two years, like I'd come into class with my jersey on, all hyped up. Like students telling me, "Oh man, y'all finna lose. Don't worry. Like don't get your hopes up. I want you to know I'm here for you after the game. Like don't worry about that. Like you're saying things like it's third period on a Friday night, like on a Friday day. Like I'm not worried about all that. I, I just want to play. So like when you doubt me as a as a player before, like it already comes out, like. Before, like, it's before the, it's even dark. The lights aren't even on yet, and you're doubting us already. It becomes an issue to me. So us winning that game and putting up more, more than 40 points when we hadn't put up more than 40 points the whole season, it really meant a lot to me and my team. Like, we celebrated that game like we won a championship, when I, which I really understand is, like, not the best things to do as a first-round playoff game. But I feel like it meant a lot for the school and my coaches. Okay, so on this play right here, as you could tell on the bottom left, um, our corner's blitzing. So um, our other safety was placing to the flats, and I'm dropping, I'm dropping to the left. And um, this was this was against Spring Branch Memorial, so they they end up making it to like third round last year. And um, this was my first pick of the season, and I seen I seen the cutback, and I just had to take it. Um, this is the same game they ran like a stretch, and I was really surprised I made this play because I felt like, like that that come that set, first safety on the edge could have made it but he overran the angle and I was there to make that play. Um this was kickoff rivalry game against Dawson. Um I'm the fold player all the way on the top. So um this guy um actually returning the kick he was our running one of my running backs last year. So it was a bit personal for me. So I try to I try to hit him as hard as I can, and I end up landing a good one right here. Um, I'm a receiver this play. This is um, playoffs first round of spring branch. This bottom, this top receiver end up running the wrong route, so I had to. I was really double covering it. Quarterback took a chance on me. 
this was um against a leaf taylor he's the ref said i was out but then the photographer later a photo later came out and you can see both i actually got both my toes down and um this was against dawson i moved they moved me to outside linebacker for this play i dropped back into coverage and realized it was a screen pass Um, this is um the Woodlands. This t this touchdown was to go up in the game before halftime, and um I hit him, um forced a fumble and end up causing a touchback. Um, this is against Strike Jesuit. This game we came out the the game with seven turnovers. Um, this is one of my picks off of our linebacker tipped the ball. Um, this is against. Clear Springs, um, I was high safety right here, free safety. We ended up getting a seam across the middle. Um, I was lucky enough to break that pass up. Um, this is the same game, Clear Springs, I'm a receiver. Um, this was like the first play of the game, and we had a holding call. Second, so second play of the game. No, actually, this was a third down. We had a, a run and then a holding call. Um, this is against Alvin. Our last district game, um, I ran like a little seam for a touchdown. This is a Tascacita. Um, this is a Tascacita second round of the playoffs. Man, he ended up swinging me, which I didn't expect him to do because I, I clearly ran out of bounds. Yeah. This is against strike. Um, I end up uh, pass breakup right here. Right here, this is another PBU. I end up hurting my knee right here. Um, I, as a uh, linebacker dove, you can see me rolling at the end. Um, this is a block down for a block. Um, I, I'm a big fan of blocking. I don't know. I just like to see my my teammates win at the same time. But that dude was fast. He ended up catching him too. But um, it was just enough for him to score. This is against um Ailey Taylor again. Just me. Just a normal, typical fill in the hole. This was more like a more lateral play. I think this was like a um pitch or like a like a little dump. This one was a um, PBU. Um, I was middle safety, so like I was like eight yards off. So I had to I really played underneath it, and then um tipped it. So this one, this one, we ended up. Um, I didn't really, I didn't pick the ball off, but me and my teammate, we both grabbed the ball. So I ended up letting them get it, you know, same team. But I posted, I put that one on my highlights because I think it showed how far I could get as, as like, as in terms of depth. This one was another pick, um, tip drill again. My, um, two safeties ended up not coming down with it. So I, I was there to pick it off. Um, this, this was first game of the season. Um, I hit the dude, and my teammate was fortunate enough to pick it off right here. This was um Spring Branch Memorial again. Um, this is a PBU. That ball, I really should have picked it off, but I stumbled a little. Um, this is DOS. I mean, this is strike. I annihilated this kid. I, I really, I look, if you look, I look back because I, I really thought I was going to get a penalty called on me because I realized how bad I hit him. Um, this is just a fumble recovery. This kid, number one right here, he forces the fumble. He ended up having first team all state in secondary.
this play right here, I come and fill the hole. Um, we were in sky right here, so that means I was 15 yards off the ball. So I, I um played that play because I felt it showed how fast I came downhill. Um, same thing with this play. This this team was a big fan of running just straight down the pipe, and I feel like I was doing a good job of containing. Great stuff, Dylan. Thanks for breaking down your junior highlights for us. Yes, sir. Now to close out here, Dylan, we're going to do a rapid fire getting to know segment. First off, what's your favorite type of food? Crawfish. Crawfish, okay. What's your favorite, favorite TV show? Uh, I like Stranger Things and Riverdale. Favorite movie? Um, I would say The Longest Yard or um, what's the name? Forrest Gump. Favorite music genre and artist? I like rap and country, and then I would probably say um, Lil Baby and Morgan Wallen. Okay. What's your favorite professional sports team? The Panthers, Carolina Panthers. Okay. Favorite professional sports athlete? Um, either Luke Keekley, well, he's retired, so I would say Christian McCaffrey. How would you describe your personality off the football field? Um, goofy, really goofy. Yeah. I, I think you have some hobbies outside of football. You're, you like to uh, fish quite a bit, right? Yes, sir. I love fishing. In fact, um, if, like, college doesn't work out, I mean, if NFL doesn't work out, I think that I'm going to, like, um, go to pursue my commercial fishing license and get into that. I want to own a charter boat. That's awesome. What type of fish do you usually go for? Um, I usually go for a speckled trout and redfish, which is, like, more of a um, saltwater fish. But occasionally I fish for bass and catfish. Like, I would fish for bass and catfish if I got, like, an hour or two for downtime, and I just want to go to, like, a little pond in the neighborhood creek or something. But usually if I, if I have some time, like, I'd go down to Galveston and I fish for trout and redfish. Nice. Outside of football and fishing, do you have any other hobbies outside of Um, I like to well, I like to work out. I mean, I like to go mudding with my truck. That's really it. I like sometimes I occasionally play basketball. Do you have any uh, pregame rituals or traditions? Well, I would say I, every game I chill with my girlfriend and eat canes. But since we're not dating anymore, I have to find something else to do. So I'm pr I'm pretty sure I'm just going to chill, drink my two my normal two bodies of Pedialyte and go on by my day. And lastly, before we uh, close out here, I ask every guy, what are you most looking forward to when you think ahead to your future at Colorado? Seeing the city of Boulder, everyone tells me it's great and amazing. And having the opportunity to watch all the people who doubted me as growing up and claimed they were better than me or didn't want my best interest to be sitting on their couch and watching me on TV. I feel like, I feel like it'd just be a pivotal moment in my life. That's awesome, Dylan. Uh, great stuff. I, I really appreciated getting to know you a little bit better. I'm sure fans are going to as well. I, I really appreciate you for taking the time out. Yes, sir. Thank you.